The Gemara in Maseret Rosh Hashanah, page 16, says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu decides what type of parnasah you're going to get on Rosh Hashanah. Decide what type of parnasah you're going to get on Rosh Hashanah. But what does parnasah mean? Does it only mean money? No. Parnasah means more than just money. Parnasah also means the fun times you're going to have in this life. So a certain weight of fun you're going to have. Now, so Hashem wants you to have joy in this world. In fact, there's a Gemara that says that if a person does not enjoy certain things, he'll get punished for not enjoying them. Why would why did you not enjoy this? Meaning that there is a certain amount of joy that Hashem wants you to have. That's why He made intimacy joyful. He wants you, even though the mitzvah of reproduction and also the mitzvah of being with your wife is a mitzvah from the Torah. They're both mitzvot of the Torah. They're both actually in your ketubah. Nonetheless, Hashem made it fun. I mean, imagine it wasn't fun. No one would have any kids. One generation, everybody dies. Why? Because to have a kid is difficult. No one would want to have a kid. If uh, a lot of things that we do weren't fun, we wouldn't do them. Imagine, uh, you know, imagine that uh, certain things were not fun. Imagine there was no colors. Everything was gray. So certain things would lose their value and we would lose their desire. So Hashem made a certain amount of joy in the world and He wants you to enjoy it. But He wants to enjoy it in a kosher way. Meaning, if you enjoy it in a kosher way, no problem. You're enjoying the world as you're supposed to. But if you're enjoying things in a non-kosher way, then that will take away from the kosher joy you're supposed to have. Meaning, if let's say you are intimate with your wife, that's a kosher enjoyment. Kadosh Baruch Hu says, You can do whatever you want. Enjoy it. Your wife, it's kosher. She's Torah. Baruch Haba. It's mitzvah. Mitzvah to do it. Have as much of it as you want during the kosher times. But if he's wasting seed, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Ah, you're wasting seed. Then you're getting a certain amount of pleasure from the seed. From this, oh, no problem. I'm going to take it away somewhere else. How? I'm going to take away money from you. I'm going to take away the zivuk from you. I'm going to take away mazal from you. All of the other things you were supposed to enjoy, I'm going to take those away from you. Why? Because you wasted seed uh, one time this week. On purpose. Not on accident. On purpose. So you enjoyed, and Hashem took away the joy from somewhere else. So now, there's a joy called smoking drugs. Now, drugs come in different forms. Sometimes it's marijuana, sometimes it's crack, sometimes it's cocaine, ecstasy, acid, mushrooms, a lot of stuff. I had a lot of friends that were drug dealers and drug, fr- and drug addicts. And I actually had a few employees that I paid for their rehab. But, oh, Hashem, I never did drugs in my life because I like my brain. But that doesn't mean I don't know anything about them. Now, all of these drugs, Rabotai, all of these drugs are 100% forbidden. Why are they forbidden? Why are they forbidden? Because, I know you have the answer, because you saw the show about drugs. Rav Moshe Feinstein, Allah Shalom, says, Shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid. You have an obligation in the Torah, one of the commandments is that you have to think that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is next to you at all times. The King of Kings. Melech Malchei Amlachim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is next to you at all times. Which means you have to be ready to meet Him at all times. At all times. No exceptions. A person that intentionally changes their mental status from normal to abnormal because of the use of elective drugs, whether it be pills or it be marijuana, or the other drugs that I mentioned, Rav Moshe Feinstein says, according to the Torah, he's supposed to get a death penalty on the spot. Because he's judged as a ben sore more. That's what he's judged as. A wayward child that gets a death penalty. Smoking marijuana one time. Ecstasy one time. It's all the same. In Shemaim, there's no like the government, oh, marijuana, only a year, a year of probation. Cocaine? No, that's two years in jail. Crack? We're just going to leave you there. We're going to leave you in jail forever. No, 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 my friends. In Shemaim, all drugs are the same, if they're elective. Now, what about if you're taking for medicinal reasons, which means really only one of those drugs you can take for medicinal reasons, or two, let's say painkillers and, uh, and uh, marijuana. Now, if there is a 
drug that's available to handle your pain, let's say if a person has cancer, or uh, all types of uh, problems with their bones or so on, and they need something for pain. If there is a pain management system that does not alter your mind, you're obligated to take that one. But if that one doesn't work for you, simply it doesn't work, your body doesn't react to it, then you are allowed to try the other ones like marijuana and, uh, and, the, and the pills and so on. But if there is one that, is a, uh, that doesn't alter your mind, you're obligated to use that one. Now, the reality is, in places like California where they made uh, uh, marijuana mitzvah, uh, over there, people say everybody's sick. Everybody's sick. Everybody has a sick. Everybody has a card. Everybody has a sick card. 25 years old, sick. 35 years old, sick. Everybody's sick. Everybody's sick to get the drugs. Because they want to make this mitzvah. There's such tzaddikim over there. So now, if you really are sick, but you're still religious, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made it a way for you. How? CBD. CBD doesn't get you high. If you need the chemicals that come from the plant to help your pain, you can still get the chemicals without altering your state of mind, which means you can take... CBD in different ways, through cake, cookies, toothpaste, a million different ways that you could have it without getting high. Which means, if you're still getting high, it has nothing to do with pain, Baba. It has nothing to do with pain, it has nothing to do with any mitzvah, it's your rasha, your merusha, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to punish you. He's going to punish you for it. Why? Because you didn't believe that he was next to you. You didn't believe it was next to you. You didn't do Shibit Yashem. You thought Hashem created the world, but he's in Jamaica. He's on vacation. Maybe smoking hashish with you. You thought Hashem is like you. And that's why Kadosh Baruch Hu says, you thought I was like you. Now you're going to say I'm not like you. Pasuk in the Torah. You thought I was like you, I'm not like you. That's why Rabotai. You want to be a Jew? A kosher one? All those drugs, you have to get them out of your system. Why? Every single time you take, inhale, marijuana, you take a pill, you do any of that stuff, you're altering your mind. You, my friend, are making a sin from the Torah, not from the rabbis, from the Torah. It's like eating pig. Yeah, but I like it. Okay, so you'll like Ganon too. What can I tell? I'm just telling you what's allowed, what's not allowed. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. Do what you want. It doesn't, doesn't change my life. It changes your life. But I can tell you for sure that there are major, major problems with people that consume drugs. And one of the major problems is the fact that they simply get used to a life that's not reality. Where normal life becomes insufficient for them. They enjoy being high so much that not being high is no longer tolerable for them. And it requires for them to adjust their life because all of the fun that they remember is when they were high. So now if you tell them, listen, come to Shio, it'll be fun. They're like, what, the, the rabbi smokes, smokes on stage? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, he takes pills? He's a good rabbi, this guy. No, no, no pills. Why? Does lines? Why he's giving a shul Torah? No, there's no drugs, chamo. There's no drugs. Shul Torah, your neshama, will be elevated from the shul Torah. The guy's like, I'm going to have fun like that, just listening to Shul Torah for two hours? How could that be fun? He doesn't understand. He cannot connect fun and Torah. Why? Because all the fun he's gotten himself used to has come in the form of drugs. Same thing will come for marriage. The person, the person is going to get married one day, and his wife says, uh, Honey, let's go have fun on, uh, on a vacation. Let's go have fun on a vacation. So he thinks that when he's packing, he's supposed to be packing his drugs too because that's the fun. So when he gets arrested at the airport and goes to jail for 10 years and he can't see his kids anymore, it's like, wow, well, I was just having fun. Okay, you have fun, no problem. Have fun with Steve and Jose in cell number 8. So everybody knows drugs are not good. You don't have to be a genius. No drug addict in the world will ever tell you, I made the right decision by starting to smoke pot. No drug addict in the world will ever tell you, that he thought he was going to become a drug addict. No drug addict ever thought for a second that it's possible for him to get a, become a drug addict. But guess what? They all did. 
And they all started just like the average person, smoking a cigarette, a little pipe, a little weed, a little this, a little that. Before you know it, they're going like this every day. Junkies. Complete junkies. And they cannot live without it. They cannot live without it. And they have to go through rehab and kill themselves and almost die in order to hopefully, maybe, one day, have a regular life. And even then, it's almost impossible because how much damage these drugs do on your brain. So that's the key. If you want to ruin your life, do drugs. You want Genom in this world? Enjoy drugs too. You want Gan Eden? Understand that you do not need drugs and it's also a sin to do them. All forms of drugs. Whether it's marijuana or it's pills or even if it's a legal drug. Like whether the government makes it legal or not doesn't make it allowed. Just so you guys understand. The government's rules are completely irrelevant to the Torah. Completely irrelevant. If the government's rules agree with the Torah, good. If the government's rules contradict the Torah, we're not allowed to listen to the government's rules. You're not allowed to violate the Torah for the sake of government. Like if the government said it, you're allowed to kill. Once a year. You're still not allowed to kill. Why? The Torah says you're not allowed to kill. So even if the government says you're allowed to smoke drugs and inhale them and eat them and, and whatever you want, put them in your eyes for all I care. They tell you to do that, you're still forbidden. Why? It alters your state of mind and it puts you in a status of someone that deserves a death penalty. Hashem doesn't want to kill his kids. Why are you putting him in that position? Why are you putting him in that position? Next question. And right here, over here, in the front. And then we'll get to the one in the back. Pass the mic, please. What about alcohol? There's some, like, for example, Purim, where you're supposed to drink. When you drink, you're altering your state of mind that you can't greet Hashem. Right. Or Mashiach. So, no, so the way you're supposed to uh, drink on Purim is not, does not mean that you're supposed to drink that way the whole year. There's a mitzvah to drink if you can tolerate it, and you know how to serve Hashem with, with that mitzvah. So the Gemara Masechet Megillah says you're supposed to drink, so you do not know who Mordechai is and who Aman is. So the Chachamim say, what does it mean you don't know who Aman is and who's Mordechai? Meaning that you understand that it wasn't because of Haman that, Hashem, that uh, we almost died, and it wasn't because of Mordechai that we're still alive. It's because of Hashem. Everything is because of Hashem. So that's really the mitzvah. You're supposed to drink to elevate your status and get closer to Hashem through that drinking once a year. But if your drinking simply gets you closer to becoming a criminal, that drinking gets you closer to becoming a loser, that drinking gets you closer to becoming a, a, a sinner, a rasha, you're not allowed to drink. You're not allowed to drink. You're not allowed to drink and act a fool in the, in the, in the streets and uh, walk or run around naked thinking, no, it's mitzvah, mitzvah, it's purim. You're not allowed to do that. That's chilu Hashem. If you know how to serve Hashem and elevate your neshama through the drinking, no problem. But if you're one of these people that's a complete mess, disaster, and uh, starts falling all over himself in the shul, thinks he's allowed to pray, you're not allowed to drink. So, But again, even that is only... Once a year. The rest of the year, you're not allowed to get drunk for no reason. There's, not, there's no permission from the Torah to get drunk. You're allowed to have a drink. You're allowed to get drunk. Because drunk alters your state of mind completely. Having a drink, for example, if your person has a buzz, he had a lechaim, he had a uh, something like that, that's not altering your state of mind. It may make the person more calm to a certain extent, but it's not altering his state of mind to the point where he loses control. But still, again, even that a person needs to be careful with. The Gemara in Masechet Yoma says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves a few different types of people. One of those people is a person who doesn't get drunk at all. At all, ever. Hashem loves them. Hashem gives them special love. Why? Because that means that that person will constantly have Hashem in mind. Me personally, for example, I don't drink uh, alcohol pretty much the whole year, including uh, Purim. Not because I'm some big tzaddik, but just because I hate it. Uh, I used to like alcohol, but my body changed over the last uh, 15 years. And uh, for some reason, I lost the taste. Kadosh Baruch apparently wanted me to uh, hate alcohol. And for me, to drink alcohol is suffering. 
So for me to, uh, to drink on Purim will be suffering for me. Can't do it. I'll, I'll drink uh, grape juice. Grape juice, maybe I'll take a sip of wine. I don't get drunk. <laughs>